Hi, this is Frank Taylor with another episode of Nature in Your Backyard, where I'm going to talk about the eastern box turtle. It's also known as the woodland box turtle, and that's what the Virginia Herpetological Society calls it. And its scientific name is Terrapine Carolina Carolina. Its scientific name was actually named uh, originally by Carl Linnaeus in the 1700s. Carl Linnaeus is known as the father of modern taxonomy. He organized the scientific naming system that we use now to catalog and organize living things. It's called binomial nomenclature, scientific naming system. Binomial, bi means two, nomen means name, so there's two names in the scientific name. And the two parts of the scientific name are genus and species. So the scientific name of the box turtle is Terrapine carolina. Now, a lot of organisms, when you look at scientific names, you'll see that they end in the word either Carolina or Virginia. And that has to do with where they were first found. A lot of the organisms were first identified by early explorers and settlers and early naturalists that when people came to the Americas, they wanted to find out what was here and catalog the organisms. The box turtle that Carl Linnaeus identified in the mid 1700s was actually sent to him as a part of a collection uh, for him to catalog and identify. Originally, the name that Carl Linnaeus assigned to it was changed a little bit. It was Carolina, but the first part of the name was changed to Terrapine. And Terrapine comes from the Algonquin word for turtle. And box turtles were very important to American Indians for a variety of reasons. For one, a box turtle like this could provide them with a meal. There's a lot of protein in here, and uh, box turtles were eaten by Native Americans. They could also use the box turtle as a food container, or a bowl, or a cup, drink out of or eat out of. It's a very convenient container, not so convenient for the box turtle. There's evidence that these were used with ceremonial rattles, that the shell was enclosed with some rocks, and then you could shake it and make a noise. I've read some articles where it was suggested that the American Indians pretty much eliminated this turtle from most of its original range in the northern parts of New England. So let's take a closer look. I'll pause the camera for a minute and we'll take a look at the box turtle and learn a little bit about his anatomy. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this basic. It's like it's Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's... So here's our box turtle. And he gets his name because, well, he can kind of close up just like a box. And he is uh, very well closed in. And this is one of the scariest box turtles I've ever seen. And by scariest, I mean he is absolutely afraid to come out. I actually found him four or five days ago, and I kept him in a large container with uh, leaf litter that had lots of invertebrates mixed in with the leaf litter. And I put various vegetables in for him, and even he even ate some bit of hamburger. He won't come out when I'm when I'm here. I've tried to get him to come out. I've tried to wait him out. And he just opens up just enough that he can sort of peek out. And if I'm here, he just closes right back in again. So I can't blame him because this is how he survived all this time. He can protect himself by completely closing in. And the way he can do that is by... Uh, the fact that his plastron, so here's some turtle anatomy. This is called the plastron. In a lot of turtles, the plastron is in one piece. 
But this plastron has a hinge, and it's hinged right across here. So this is his backside, this is his front side, and he is able to pull his head and his two front legs all the way inside and pull this plastron down closed on that side. And his rear legs would stick out back here where my fingers are, and he's able to close that up as well. This is how he survives predation, maybe by coyotes or foxes or skunks or raccoons. You know, anything that would want to get a good meal out of this usually ends up going away hungry because they can't wait him out and he can't get out. So I have to say that he has probably survived all this time because of that. These turtles can live to be up to a hundred years or more old. There was a turtle found in Rockingham County in, in 1985 that had 1874 carved in its plastron. So that date it made this turtle that they found over a hundred years old. So it's funny to me to think that this turtle might be older than I am. Turtles, box turtles like this, will eat a variety of food. And based on what I read online and in reports, box turtles will eat just about any fruit or vegetable or meat that they can find. They'll eat salamanders, spiders, insects, slugs, millipedes. They'll eat any kind of fallen fruit or berries that they can find. And in captivity, people report they'll eat just about any vegetable or meat matter that they're offered. So they're, they're, they're pretty cool about that. Another interesting thing I learned about box turtles is that they have a very limited range. They're very territorial. And actually, when I was like 10 or 12 years old, I found a box turtle where I was living in New Jersey in the suburbs. And I thought it'd be really interesting to see what is the territory of this box turtle. So even at 12 years old, I was doing, well, basically what I'm doing today. And I remember I took some blue enamel paint that um, I used for painting models. And I wrote my phone number on the top of that turtle and then just let them outside. Well, people would keep finding that turtle and they'd call my house. And my mom and dad finally got tired of it because people would call up and say, hey, uh, you lost your turtle. I found your turtle. And I was like, no, 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 no. It's, it's not my turtle. I just put my phone number on him to see where he goes. And eventually my mom and dad made me take it off. But researching it, I learned that the box turtles sometimes will live their whole life in an area of space about the size of two football fields. They're very territorial. I guess they can find everything they need in that small, relatively small area, and they just like to stay there. If it works for them, it works for them. An interesting fact about the range of box okay. turtles. One of the things that made me really think and I wondered about is where do box turtles go in the winter? Because with this really high shell, I had trouble thinking, you know, imagining how does this guy get below the freezing line? Because here in Virginia, if you look at building codes, building codes say you have to have your foundation built 24 inches deep or more because 24 inches is the deepest that they think that the ground can freeze. Well, so a lot of animals, in order not to freeze in the winter, have to get below that frost line, wherever it is in that, in that soil. And I just don't see how this guy can dig deep in the ground. And so this was another topic I researched, just like I want you to research topics and uh, ask questions and try to find information about it. The turtles rarely actually are able to bury themselves completely. A hibernating turtle, his shell is, is uh, a lot of times part way out of the ground. And so I'm thinking, how are they survive freezing? Well, apparently there's been some studies that show that 40 to 50% of this turtle will actually freeze. The temperature will go below 32 degrees and it concentrates his fluids in other parts and somehow he can survive. So to me, that, that's a, a, just an amazing story in itself. How do these turtles survive 
freezing and the, you know think about how cold it is in the winter time and how cold it can get and yet this species survives because remember reptiles are cold-blooded they can't produce their own heat they rely on the temperature of the surroundings when it's real hot a turtle will move into the sunshine or or it, if he's cold he'll move into the sunshine or if he gets too hot, a turtle will, will move over into the shade. So they control their body temperature by environmental regulation. But when it gets cold, cold, cold like that, they can't really do anything about it. So I want to talk about reproduction. And one of the best ways to tell if a box turtle is male or female is that the males generally have red eyes. Well, to be honest, I haven't been able to see his eyes. But another feature is, you see how this shell is flared at the base? A, a lot of male turtles will have a, an exaggerated flare here that the females don't have. And the other thing the males have is an indention right here. Do you see how, it might be hard to see, but do you see how this is indented right here? There's a slight depression here and that would identify this particular turtle as a male, even though I haven't seen his eyes. Females will lay eggs, partially bury them in the ground. They'll lay two to eight eggs per year. The eggs take about two months to, to hatch. And I'll be honest, I have never seen a baby box turtle. I think that would be really cool. But whenever I see box turtles, they're usually about this size. So while I was editing this video on box turtles that I did about a week ago, during the editing process, my friend Donnie Goodman, who also is in Floyd County, saw this female box turtle laying eggs outside in his yard. So here is a female box turtle. And the next two videos, our links are going to be from Donnie Goodman's observations of this female box turtle actually in the process of laying eggs. What an amazing moment. What an incredible thing to be able to witness in your lifetime. A box turtle laying eggs, a, a creature that is uh, on a, uh, a list of concerned species for the state of Virginia and is could be in trouble and here is a female laying eggs what an incredible incredible thing this is our new friend who is out here laying eggs she's covered the nest up and actually looks kind of um well like she's guarding it so if you want to kind of i'll zoom in on her eyes That is one serious turtle. size. Another interesting fact that I found when I was researching this is that um, some of you know that I'm, my backyard here is in Floyd County. I live in Floyd County. It, across the state they've, they've measured the range in turtle sizes and the largest box turtles are consistently come from Floyd County, Virginia. I thought that was an unusual little fact. People are concerned about declining populations of box turtles. And here's one of the reasons why. Car, box turtle. Car, box turtle. They really don't have a chance when they're out on the road. And they move slowly. So uh, box turtles are often hit by cars. And so in addition to cars running box turtles over, there's also a concern about the pet trade. Apparently box turtles are really well liked as pets. And box turtles are apparently collected 
for an overseas pet trade. Box turtles really aren't great organisms to keep it as pets. If you're going to keep a, a box turtle and keep it healthy, it requires a certain amount of sun each day, it requires particular temperature and humidity gradients, and there's a lot more to keeping a box turtle and keeping it healthy than it looks like on the surface. I always recommend if you're interested and you find a box turtle, and like I do with a lot of the animals I find, hey, it's fun to keep them for a few days and, and look at them and learn about them and then always replace them or bring them back to exactly where you found them. There is concern about the box turtle numbers in the state of Virginia. So if you find a box turtle, go to the Virginia Herpetological Society website and uh, they have a form there you can fill out and report uh, your finding of that turtle. And they have a few questions there. And so before I release this turtle today, I'm going to fill out that form on the Virginia Herpetological Society webpage and contribute a little bit to understanding of the populations here in Virginia. Another interesting thing about box turtles is they are the state reptile of two states. They're the state reptile of North Carolina and Tennessee. Well, Virginia doesn't have a state reptile yet, uh, if I understand. And the box turtle has been up for state reptile at least two times. Here in Virginia in 1999, and then again in 2009, a bill was promoted on the floor of the House or the Senate, and it was shot down, mostly because of concerns that we're picking a state reptile that's just like the state reptile of North Carolina. And apparently that didn't didn't, didn't go very well. So, woodland box turtle, I hope you enjoyed seeing this episode. I really wish that I was able to show you his feet and his paws that he uses for digging, and he has a beak, and it would have been really cool to look at his eyes, but really, he just he just won't come out. I, I can't get him to perform on camera. Our woodland box turtle, males have red eyes, uh, females have more brown eyes, males have this flare, around the base. The nails will have an indention here. I hope you get lucky and find one, just like I did, walking through the woods. Nature in your backyard. Thanks for watching.